I was a healthy, active, and involved kid. I played sports, I did theater, I was happiest when I was busy, when I was challenged, and that's how I lived my life until I was 17, when I developed POTS. My whole life changed in a split second. During a game of soccer, I got hit in the side of the head with a ball, and I went from not being able to stand to not being able to get out of bed. I was the shell of the person I had been earlier that day. I had the initial symptoms after the concussion of fatigue and dizziness, headaches and migraines, but then over time, things just got so much worse. While I was trying to stay in college, I was also trying to figure out what was wrong with my body. I went to 27 different medical facilities, Mass General, Spalding, Children's Hospital, Israel. I saw over 41 doctors. I tried so many treatments and medications that I can't even count, and nobody knew what was wrong. After seven years of searching, I had to fly to Arizona to see Dr. Brent Goodman in order to get diagnosed. It only took a 15 minute tilt table test to diagnose me with POTS. POTS is a syndrome that really has two criteria, but a lot of associated features. People with POTS have orthostatic intolerance, that is, they don't tolerate standing up, and they have an exaggerated orthostatic tachycardic response. Their heart rate goes up more than it should when they stand up. It is a syndrome, meaning that it encompasses different symptoms. And people do not only complain of their heart racing, but they can complain of a zillion other things. Shortness of breath, tightness of chest, lightheadedness, fibromyalgia, dizziness, brain fog, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, GI tract shut down, headaches, fainting, heat intolerance, blood pulling, fatigue, tingling. I think there's about a hundred more. POTS is not an isolated syndrome. It is part of a continuum, of a spectrum of conditions that range from very mild to very severe. And the common link is the autonomic nervous system. So for this reason, we put POTS as one of the major manifestations of autonomic dysfunction, or what we also call dysautonomia. Right after I was diagnosed, it was really rocky, and I was in a wheelchair. Thanks to neurologists at the Mayo Clinic, I'm functioning today. I'm still someone who lives with chronic illness. I still experience symptoms, always, but I know how to manage them now. One of the first places that I went to to understand what my diagnosis meant was Dysautonomy International's website. That's when I learned that one to three million Americans have POTS and that the average diagnostic delay is over four years. And I thought, there are millions of other people just like me out there that have endured so much and I want to be part of finding better and more effective treatments and a cure. We launched on October 1st, 2012 and our goal from the very beginning was to really change the lives of people who have POTS and other forms of dysautonomia by raising awareness, by raising funds for research, and not only raising money for it, but actually advocating for the research to happen. We've funded $400,000 in POTS research, and we have another two to $300,000 in funding that we're gonna give out in 2017. While we are absolutely funding research to support other scientists doing research, we're also getting engaged in doing research ourselves. We've collaborated with researchers at Vanderbilt University and University of Calgary to build the largest POTS research database in history. We feel that bringing patients and physicians and researchers together is the best way that we can advance the pace of research on autonomic disorders. This Autonomy International provides an extremely valuable interface between patients and physicians and researchers. Right now, there's no comprehensive treatment for any form of dysautonomia. They're all chronic illnesses with no cure, but they don't have to remain that way. With research, we can change millions of lives. I couldn't change the fact that I had POTS, but I could change how I responded to it. I decided to take action through advocacy. I've given a talk at Harvard Medical School, lobbied local, state, and national politicians, shared my story with media outlets, and raised over $40,000 for the Boston POTS Walk. The more people that know about POTS, the more people that will be interested in researching it and funding research. Neuroscience is critical to improving the lives of individuals living with POTS and other autonomic nervous system disorders.